Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today, I'm going to be making a recipe with the most intriguing name. It's called Dead Man's Leg. Isn't that a phenomenal name? Intriguing, mysterious, grim, slightly horrific. Now, a dead man's leg is not literally a dead man's leg. It's a pudding, as the British call it, or a dessert. It is a classic boiled dessert. If you haven't seen my drowned or boiled baby <laughs> recipe, which is another terribly named dish, that I made a few years ago. I'll put a link to that down below. But that too is a pudding or a boiled dessert. Basically, it's like a biscuit dough that is wrapped up in some linen and then placed into boiling water and boiled as a means of cooking it. You can also steam it as well, but today we're going to be boiling it. Now, I first learned about Dead Man's Lake when I was researching the drowned or boiled baby, which I got from this book which is Lobscuffs and Spotted Dog. It's a companion to the Aubrey Matron novels, which I have not read. This was recommended by a few of my lovelies. This book is written by Anne Shotinoff Grossman and Lisa Grossman Thomas. This book has lots of intriguing period recipes. I bookmarked a lot of these intriguingly titled dishes, including this one. Yep, and it is exactly what the title says, Bat Guano and Water. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so another name for a dead man's leg is a jam roly-poly, and this book calls it the jam roly-poly, but I'm making the dead man's leg recipe from this book, The Wilderness Chef by Ray Mears, the famous outdoorsman. And I got this book from my library, love my library. And Ray has a recipe for dead man's leg. I like this recipe. It's a bit of a modern take, although it uses the traditional boil method. It uses self-rising flour, and he suggests that this is something that you might want to make on your next camping trip. It's that simple and easy, but it does take some time to cook, a couple of hours. So let's go ahead, and get started. So in a large mixing bowl, we're gonna add our self-rising flour. Now, self-rising flour contains our baking powder and salt. If you don't have self-rising flour, you probably have baking powder, and there are recipe conversions online. It's something like a cup of flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, and a half teaspoon of salt. Something like that. Don't quote me on it. Google is your friend most of the time. <laughs> and then we're going to add some suet. And suet is beef tallow or fat. And this has been processed, so it's like pelletized. It says shredded. I think traditionally this was grated manually, which is a lot of work. So give thanks to the machines that did that for me. And some sugar, because this is a dessert. So it's kind of like a biscuit, right? We've got fat, flour, leavening, sugar, and there's salt already in the flour, so we don't need to add any of that. Next, we're just gonna add some milk to combine this into a dough. From my understanding after making these recipes, a pudding in British culture is not the pudding that we consider in the US. In the US, in the States, I think of pudding as like jello pudding, like a custard. But generally speaking, Brits call a pudding a dessert of any kind, apparently but it also specifically can mean this kind of steamed dessert, kind of like a figgy pudding or a figgy duff or Christmas pudding. It's kind of like a cake that is made in a tin or wrapped in linen or some kind of fabric and then boiled or steamed, which is akin to what we're gonna be doing today. So here we have it, it's forming a dough. Great, it's a little sticky. I might need some additional flour, we'll see. Now, this doesn't require too much kneading. We just want this to form a dough. Use my scraper. I use this a lot. If you make any breads or doughs, really handy tool right here. So I'm just working this to get all that flour in. That's pretty good. Okay, next, we're gonna roll out our biscuit dough into a rectangle and there are not specific dimensions. It just says about two inches shy of the width of your pot. 
If this is a recipe that you can make on a camping trip, it doesn't have to be too specific, eh? And there are no pictures, so I don't really know what the finished product is supposed to look like, but that's kind of fun too, to be able to use your imagination. I think it's called dead man's leg because of the method of cooking it. You swaddle it in a towel and tie it up so it can grimly look like a dead man's leg, I guess, is what I can gather where the name comes from. All right, so I've got my lid here. Yeah, I think that's certainly wide enough. I've got a dish of water here. And now, I've got some raspberry jam. I'm gonna use about six to eight tablespoons to coat the inside of this. I'm using bon maman, my husband's favorite. I'm not eating too much bread these days, so sadly that means less jam for me, which is fine. Okay, now we're going to spread this evenly, but we're gonna leave a border around the edges because as we roll it, the jam's gonna be pressed out to the edges and we don't want it to ooze everywhere. Oh, it smells so good. I have a memory of picking the last bits of raspberries from a farm in Montana Went with my friends and it was delightful. We paid a flat rate to pick as many of the last raspberries from the vines at the end of the season. It was so much fun and I had so many super ripe raspberries. I made jam and it was, it was a lot of fun. Okay, so very nice. Are you one of those people that likes to get jam or honey all the way to the edges of the toast? I am one of those people. My husband is not, but I said, come on, you're gonna short shrift the edges? They're not gonna taste as good if you don't get the jam all the way to the side. <laughs> all right, now we're going to roll our leg up. Nothing was said about rolling it tightly or anything. It just said roll it up. So here we are. And then I'm gonna add a bit of water to the sides so that we can seal it as we go along. As I said, we don't want any of the jam leaking out. So I'm gonna kind of press it along as we go. See how the jam is kind of building up? That's why we've left a clean edge on the end there. and then more water to seal the last bit here. Oh, even with leaving a bit, I still have some jam wanting to leak out. Well then, put less jam than I did. Now here I've got a piece of muslin, just a piece of cotton cloth. Nice and thin that I've scalded, meaning I dipped it into boiling water. And I'm gonna wring out the excess water. And this is what we're gonna cook the leg in. <laughs> Isn't this great? Love it. It's very thin. If you don't have a piece of cloth like this lying around, you can use a flour sack towel. That'll be just fine. So lay it out. And then we're gonna take some flour and liberally dust this. This will keep the pudding from sticking. So, in we go. Swaddle it up. Flour it all away. Roll it up. Gonna roll it up too tightly because it is going to expand. All right, there's the leg. <laughs> now I'm gonna take some cotton string. And we're gonna tie it up. Just like we were tying a roast or something. 
And again, we're not supposed to tie it too tightly. So leaving a little bit of slack on the ends. And then Ray says to tie it twice in the middle as well. So slide this underneath. And I'm tying it, but not too tightly, just so, see, a little bit of slack. We'll see how it turns out. <laughs> Trim these off. What is that? Oh, that's my hot water. Okay, ties are shortened. All right, my lovelies, I'm back with my vessel filled with boiling water. Now we're going to plunge our leg into the water. Here we go. Shave it this way. Okay. Do, do, do. There goes our pudding. Submerge it. I'm going to put the tails in there as well. Okay. We'll top it with a little bit more water so that the Pudding is completely submerged. Reduce the heat to a simmer. I'm gonna cover this and cook this for two to three hours. And then we'll take it out, open it up, and give our dead man's leg a taste. <laughs> Alrighty, lovelies. I'll see you in a little bit. Bye. <laughs> All right, my lovelies, I am back. It has been about three hours since I placed my dead man's leg into boiling water and it should be complete. Now I've let it cool a little bit before we taste it. So let's see what it looks like. Ta -da! Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. That little bit of raspberry jam that oozed out of the top gives it a little bit of a, a red kind of vein. It's kind of amazing. So this has been cooling off a little bit so I can pick it up with my fingers. You ready for this? Here we go. The dead man's leg. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's get the excess water off of it. Look at that. Dun, dun, dun. Does it look like an, it looks more like an arm, doesn't it? A dead man's arm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wow, look at that. See that raspberry vein? Oh my gosh. So dead man's leg along with lots of other puddings are served with custard. So I picked up some bird's instant custard and I am gonna mix it up. Oof. It smells like milky vanilla. So dump that in. And we'll wait for my water to come up to a boil. So. Let's go ahead and cut this open, shall we? Let's open it up. So, look at it. It's like gauze. And it's sticking a bit, but not too much. Look at that. It's kind of slimy. Just curious. All right, I think my water just came up to the boil. Wow, look how yellow it is. And then whisk it and let it sit for one minute. And that's it, instant custard. And look at that, it's thickening up beautifully. All right, I'm gonna let that sit on its own. And let's continue unrolling our dead man's leg. It smells good, I can smell the raspberry. It's not very attractive, I have to say. Oh my goodness, <laughs> this is horrifying. <laughs> look at this, it looks like a pork tenderloin. I couldn't make something look more gnarly and like a dead man's limb, arm, whatever this is, leg. This is the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> I love it. Alrighty, let's go ahead and slice it and give it a taste. That is just so Horrifying. 
Wow. Alrighty, here we go. Let's give it a slice. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. And it's, it's tough. Wow. Look at it. It's swirled. Isn't that wild? Wow. Wow. Let's cut this side. Oh my gosh. There it is. Maybe I should have cooked it a little bit longer. It looks a little bit doughy in the middle. Well, we're not going to worry about that. Look at that. Amazing. That's horrifying. So now I'm going to put our little pieces of leg and pour custard on top. Ready? Blub, 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 blub. <laughs> wow, look how yellow it is. It looks like eggs or something. Oh my gosh. Okay, somehow that didn't pour quite how I thought it was going to pour. It's a lot thicker. It almost looks like a hollandaise sauce on there. All right, let's just taste the custard first. <laughs> Mm. Sweet, milky, slightly vanilla, but more milky than eggy. When I see this bright yellow color, I immediately think eggy, but not really eggy at all. It tastes a little bit like cereal milk. That's what it reminds me of, but thicker in consistency, of course. Alrighty, let's taste the dead man's leg. There it is. It's a lucky mouse. Mm. It's actually very nice. The predominant flavor, of course, is raspberry from all that raspberry jam. It goes really nicely with that little vanilla custard. It's light milkiness. The texture is dense. It's got a little bit of a chew to it. Mm-hmm. I like it. I'm getting some raspberry seeds in it, which is a nice crunch, but it's a pretty good dessert. The texture is very, very different from any dessert that I'm used to having. It's not like a cake, which is light and airy and fluffy. It's dense and slightly chewy, like kind of like a dumpling. If you have chicken and dumplings, a little bit like that, but not fluffy, definitely dense. In terms of flavor, um, it's a little bit like, um, it's not like a biscuit either. Mm. Oh, you know what the texture's like? The texture's like gnocchi. Italian pasta that's made with potatoes, mashed potatoes. It has that texture. A little bit bouncy, dense when you bite it, but the flavor is raspberry, just lightly sweet, but a very nice little dessert. Mm -hmm. I like the texture. I was expecting it to be stodgy or just doughy, too bready, but the raspberry is perfectly swirled inside. It makes it completely flavorful and very much a dessert, but it, it, it does look very shocking and, and quite horrifying if you ask me if you're not used to seeing something like this and equate it to something delicious. And if someone calls this a dead man's leg, you're you'd be surprised. And I can see why people call it a jam roly-poly. Yes. Alrighty, my lovelies, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends, follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. <laughs>